Hello and welcome. Um, today we're just going to be talking a little bit about uh, refrigerant low pressure controls and how they operate. All right, and, and how they set up the pressure control switches to utilize them as an operating control on chillers or freezers. Uh, this, this video is basically intended for uh, young fellas getting into the trade, maybe currently working in the trade, and, and still have a little bit of an issue figuring out the ins and outs of these controls. And this, this might make your life a little bit easier. So basically I've just got a little blackboard here and I've, I've done a shitty little diagram of, uh, of what you would see on a normal low pressure control. Uh, you'd see the KPI, PSI, uh, KPA, PSI uh, indications, your cut in, your differential. Um, and for today, we're gonna be using uh, you know, a chiller or a cool room and a freezer doesn't really matter what they are. They could be a bottle cabinet, upright chiller, could be a cool room, like I said, could be a freezer, could be an under bench freezer. You know, <clears throat> way back when in the day, uh, they used to just sell the condensing units and the equipment with the low pressure control and people didn't use a whole lot of thermostats. Uh, so you had to be able to set up these pressure controls in order to achieve the temperatures you wanted with the equipment. So um, this is still the case in, in a lot of places. Uh, and, and when a young fella comes across this, sometimes they start scratching their head and they do it slightly wrong. Um, now for today, we're going to be using R404 refrigerant for both systems because it just keeps things easy. Um, and for the, the cool room chiller, we're going to operate between 2 and 4 degrees because that's normally food safety. That's where they operate. And for a freezer, we're going to go minus 18 to minus 20. Minus 18... Uh, you know, ice cream begins getting a little bit softer because it has such a high fat content. Minus 20, it's usually as hard as a brick. In some cases, you, some freezers go to minus 22 and cut out. Uh, I know a lot of Scope products do. They're a bit like Cold Stream. Uh, you know, those types of products, the two door, under bench, whatever. But for this, uh, for this sort of scenario, we're just going to do minus 20. <clears throat> so down on the bottom, you see I've, I've written out chiller settings. Um, cut in at four degrees. Um, so if you take a pressure temperature chart or uh, you can find an app on your phone, Danfoss has a great app, uh, download that to your phone, has every refrigerant known to man and it makes life easy. Um, you can find the pressure uh, that's related to that temperature for that refrigerant. So at four degrees, R404A will have a pressure of 84 PSI. All right, so we want uh, our end to be at 4 degrees, 84 PSI. So we take the 84 that we found on our pressure temperature chart and we're going to adjust the screws on the top of the pressure control until the little dial comes up to 84. Now that's just a reference. We still got to test that once it's set and I'll come back to that. So continuing on, we want it to cut out at minus 6. And according to the, our little pressure temperature chart, at minus 6, R44A is 56 PSI. So that gives us a temperature or a differential, a pressure differential between 84 and 56 of 28 psi. So that's going to be our differential set point. So we're going to take that 28 psi up to our pressure control and we're going to put in, we're going to find where the 28 is and we're going to put the screws and adjust it until it says 28. And that one's 84. Then we're going to do is we're going to start up our refrigeration system. So somewhere on that little refrigeration system, there should be a service valve. Uh, and you're going to front seat that suction service valve until you create a low pressure event. So that means we can actually test to see that the unit is cutting out at 56 PSI. Because that tells us it's cutting out at minus 6. And a chiller, it has to cut out in the minuses because you need hot to go to cold, so you always have a large temperature differential. So to achieve, to achieve the two degrees that we require, a lot of them, on average, is minus six. Not saying that in every case it's minus six. For the bulk of them, it will be minus six. There are some products out there that will be colder than that. Some, will, some because of airflow and different airflows, it may be minus eight. Some might be slightly warmer, minus five or minus four and a half. But for this scenario, we're gonna set it to minus six. So we front seat it, make sure that the pressure control stops the compressor from operating at 56, and then you're going to open up that service valve. All right, the pressure is going to rise because of the heat load, and we want to make sure that the on our compound gauge that's connected to the system, 
that the system restarts at 84 psi and it corresponds to 4 degrees. That's very important because if it's an operating control we don't want it to be any warmer than that because the food will spoil. So, and 4 degrees is also a very good temperature. We don't want it any colder, you know, 3.5 because we might not get all the frost accumulation off the evap coil which is a big problem because that frost will creep in and it will overcome the coil eventually in time and then it'll stop all the airflow and then you could have possible damage occur to your system like right? compressors will, will get taken out so we make sure it's at four degrees now saying that if your system is slightly different because of a number of scenarios you may have to look at that and give it some more time but for this scenario it's a perfect world and these are the temperatures we're using so going on to the freezer same deal all right we want it to cut in at minus 18 because we don't want our ice cream getting too soft. So the corresponding R404A refrigerant pressure to that is 32. So we move up to our pressure control. We set our cut in at 32. All right, and we want the refrigerant system to cut out at minus 30. Some say, wow, that's pretty cold, but that's pretty much what they do. They run anywhere between minus 28, minus 30 as you're out. So the corresponding pressure is 14.5 psi, which gives us a temperature differential of 17 psi between this and that. Between the 32 and the 14.5, it's about 17 psi. So that's what our differential set point will be set at. So we'll move that up here, we'll plug it into our pressure control, and again, we'll start up our freezer system, we'll find our, our suction service valve, we'll wind it in as it's operating to test that these set points are correct that the system will cut um, out at 14.5 psi and will cut back in at 32 psi. It's very important to test the system. That's the best thing. I mean, you can't just rely on these little um, pressure control face plates. They move around. Just because the numbers are there doesn't mean it's set right there. You have to test the control or you're having a call back and not getting paid for it. Now, with these low pressure controls, that's the operating. You'll come across it, like I say, it's sort of like the cheaper way. A lot of equipment's coming out with electronic thermostats, and some of them are pumped down, which is fantastic and great, but you'll still have this low pressure control as a safety, all right? And even then, um, they have all kinds of problems. Sometimes the springs, the mechanically, they become mechanically broken. They don't work right. They're cutting out in, in places they shouldn't, so you have to replace them. Or maybe the capillary tubes start leaking on them and you decide just to change the little switches and everything. So you still have to set it up for the new equipment. So as a safety, you can set them up in certain ways. So as a safety on a pump down system, it has a solenoid. So the thermostat cuts out the solenoid. The solenoid um, closes. system pumps itself down, goes off on the, on the pressure control. Now, we can set that pressure control to cut in at four degrees on a chiller. And this is important too because um, the thermostat in the room is sensing the air temperature. Okay, but it's not considering anything that's happening to the evaporator. So say the door seals to the room are bad or maybe there are a gap, maybe the people are leaving the doors open too long. A lot of moisture is accumulating in that room. Okay, and it's causing ice to build up on the coil. Well, if we have a pump down system and we decide that we're going to set this pressure control at 4 degrees saturated temperature, okay, that will allow our coil to defrost even though the thermostat has come back on. Because the thermostat has sensed that the room is warmed up and has turned on the, the liquid line solenoid valve, right? And the pressure is building, but because our coil has ice on it, the ice is going to hold that coil at, at below, you know, at, you know, below four degrees because the ice is there, lowers the pressure. So if we set that pressure control to correspond, then it gives time for that ice to melt. It might not be a lot of time, maybe a couple of minutes, just to get rid of the ice in the corner. But it just, it just protects the coil. It's just an extra little thing that you can use to protect the coil in some systems. So there you go in a nutshell. That's a low pressure control. Um, I have lots of little tidbits that might help uh, younger people coming through the trade. So I'll try and do some more videos. But this is sort of just a, a real easy one on low pressure controls because 
uh, I find a lot of the younger fellas still have problems with these and figuring them out. But uh, happy hunting. Hope this helps. Cheers.